morning. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce you the topic Access and Benefit Sharing and its relation to biocontrol. Thank you. Biological controls utilizes or natural substances to reduce or prevent damage caused by harmful organisms such as pests, weeds, and pathogens that pose a threat to economically or ecologically important species. The effectiveness of this method relies on access to both host species and their natural enemies in regions where they naturally occur. Biological control is often viewed as a valuable alternative to synthetic chemicals like pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides, as it minimizes risk to the environment, non-target species, and human health. Historically, classical biological control, which is typically non-commercially motivated, has often under the principle of free access and use of biological control agents across countries. Any successful biological control agent could be freely transferred between countries, irrespective of whether the country sending the agent was the country of origin. However, scientists and practitioners working in biological control must also navigate regulations related to customs, phytosanitary and zoosanitary concerns. Over the past decade, with the growing adoption of national access and benefit sharing frameworks under the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Nagoya Protocol, biological control practitioners are also required to meet the obligations set by each country. These agreements provide an international legal structure for accessing genetic resources and sharing the benefits derived from their use, a regime known as ABS. The ABS system was designed to address three distinct issues the loss of biological and genetic diversity, the biological gap between developed and, bio and developing countries, and the protection of traditional knowledge associated with genetic resources, particularly for indigenous people and local communities. Under the Convention on Bio Biological Diversity and the Nagoya Protocol, countries have the authority to regulate access to genetic resources within their jurisdictions. If they choose to exercise this right, access becomes contingent upon prior informed consent and the establishment of mutually agreed terms. These terms govern the sharing of benefits arising from the use of genetic resources, among other key considerations. Moreover, to support the development of local capacities for biodiversity conservation and sustainable use, the CBD and the Nagoya Protocol encourage collaboration and cooperation in scientific and technical research and development programs among parties. Although the Convention and the Nagoya Protocol are founded on commendable goals, the implementation of national ABS measures has proven to be a complex and challenging issue. National experiences suggest that certain aspects of the design, structure or development of ABS frameworks hinder their ability to achieve key objectives such as biodiversity conservation and the strengthening of scientific and te technological capacities in developing countries. Not only have the general objectives of the ABS system largely gone unfilled, but the mechanism appears to have adversely affected 
biodiversity research regardless of its purpose. Evidence shows that poorly crafted ABS policies in some countries, such as in Argentina and Brazil, have overly complicated or even structured access to genetic resources for non-commercial research. In these cases, local scientists have struggled to study their own country's biodiversity, even when the research did not involve exporting genetic resources or engaging with foreigner parties, ultimately bearing the consequences of ill-conceived ABS regulations. Overly restrictive and ambitious legal frameworks have also created barriers to the import and export of genetic materials, leading to delays, complications, or even the cancellation of international scientific collaboration projects, projects focused on biodiversity conservation. As a result, instead of supporting the intended goals, close national ABS framework paradoxically impeded what the international regime seek to promote, that is biodiversity conservation, the sustainable use of biological resources, biodiversity research, and international scientific collaboration and cooperation. Particularly in the context of biological control research and activities, there are growing concerns that these efforts could be jeopardized by overly restrictive and unclear ABS regulation at the national level. The use of digital sequence information, DSI, is increasingly becoming common in the field of biological control. For example, Identifying potential biological control agents and determining the population agents that are best for the environment where they will be introduced. In essence, DSI encompasses information sequences stored digitally. The DSI serves as a provisional as no international consensus on its precise currently exists. However, it is widely accepted I will continue to be, to be used until the parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Nagoya Protocol agree on a more specific terminology. In scientific communities, sequence data, nucleotid sequence data, nucleotid sequence information, and sequence information. Importantly, there is significant variation among parties and stakeholders regarding what should be included under the term DSI. Despite the fact that DSI improves the efficiency of genetic resources, its use remains contagious in the context of AB. Valuable genetic information can be freely accessed, used, and shared without the need for obtaining prior informed consent or establishing mutually agreed terms. However, the generation of genetic resources of I'm sorry, realized on the human and technical Consequently, the intrinsic value of genetic resources, that which makes them valuable, often cannot be fully captured by the country that originally provided the physical sample information 
was derived, a contrast to traditional ABS transactions involving physical materials. BSI is currently under discussion within several multilateral instruments and forums, including the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, the AF on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, the World Health Organization, and the, in the negotiations for a legally binding agreement under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea on the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Marine Biological Diversity in areas beyond national jurisdiction. These organizations and must balance competing priorities and interests, such as biodiversity conservation, benefit sharing from utilization of genetic resources, intellectual property rights, equity, and technology transfer. So, what strategies can be implemented to enhance access to genetic resources for biological control? Access to genetic resources for biological control can be enhanced through several strategies posed by ABS legislation. Recommendation number one, develop codes of conduct Institutions engaged in biological control research should establish codes of conduct and best practices for ABS compliance to mitigate challenges in the field. These frameworks are voluntarily yet essential for standardizing compliance processes and minimizing the risk of misappropriation of genetic resources in line with the Nagoya's protocol objectives. Recommendation number two, emphasize non-monetary benefits. Prioritizing non-monetary benefits, such as capacity building, training, and infrastructure development over monetary compensation is crucial, particularly in non-commercial biological control research. International collaborations that focus on these benefits can help address the scientific and technological disparities between developed and developing countries. Successful collaborations, such as those established by the United States Department of Agriculture in Argentina, illustrate the long-term advantages for emphasizing non-monetary outcomes. Recommendation number three. Advocate for ABS policy reforms. Organizations like the International Organization for Biological Control should push for the reforms to make ABS regulations more conducive to non-commercial research. Although the Nagoya Protocol allows simplified access for non-commercial many national laws still impose significant barriers. Advocating for exceptions for ABS requirement, requirements for purely scientific research, including biological control studies, could improve access. Thank you very much. Have a good day.